Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Jose from Florida Hood Blogs. Are you thinking about a mobile home in Florida? Here are our top 10 reasons why you should not buy a mobile home. I just saw a video from a local realtor trying to sell people on how good and affordable mobile homes are. Number one, and the most obvious reason why mobile homes are horrible investments is the fact that you have to pay lot rent most of the time. That means you don't actually own the lot that the mobile home is on, you're just buying the structure. You don't own the land underneath it, so you have to rent the lot from a company. In Naples, the minimum right now appears to be about $900 a month. That's pretty much a mortgage payment on a house, isn't it? It makes absolutely no sense. I don't even understand why real estate websites even allow you to list a mobile home on a realtor website when the land underneath it isn't even something you can buy. A lot of people from up north are not familiar with these lot rents because they're, everybody's familiar with the concept that if you buy a house, you own the land it's on. So a lot of people from up north are looking at mobile homes on the internet and they think, oh, you can buy this mobile home for $80,000, but then they're not aware that they have to pay up to $900 or $1,200 a month to rent that piece of land. It's an absolutely horrible investment. That's not always the case, but a lot of times it is the case, and it's an absolutely horrible investment. Many times, they'll start to jack up the prices on you at about intervals of $50 a year. So if you've been there for a while, you can end up paying up to $1,200 a month. Yes, I know people paying $1,200 a month because progressively they jack up the price on you they start you low and they keep jacking it up and jacking it up and next thing you know you're paying twelve hundred dollars a month for the land you don't own the land you're just paying to park it there and it becomes more expensive than a mortgage payment what are you going to do with your mobile home if, if, if you don't want to if you don't want it there anymore it's a mobile home you can't just grab it and pull it out it costs a lot of money to do that and uh they're in really close quarters so it may not even be possible to extract the mobile home from its location if they build up around it because the setbacks are really short and i'm seeing a disturbing trend of people who specifically buy these for twenty thousand dollars they get them really cheap and they flip them for forty fifty thousand dollars they're making twenty thirty thousand dollar profits on selling you a trailer which you can basically buy it brand new for the same amount of money or sometimes even less it's absolutely disturbing and it is a complete money pit. You know, I've met a lot of people that live in these mobile home parks and they're absolutely miserable. They tell me, my kids don't visit me. My kid, no wonder they don't like you. You're throwing away their inheritance pretty much. No wonder they don't like you, okay? At least if you own a house, they're gonna come look at the house every once in a while, make sure their investment's in good condition. No wonder they don't like you. You're throwing your money away. If you, if you live 10 years in one of these mobile home parks paying rent, you basically just throw $140,000 in the toilet which if, if it had been a house or something like that, it would still be invested. You could still access it. You're throwing your money away. And your family, of course, if you're doing something like that, they're going to hate your guts because you're throwing away their money. And uh, it, it's horrible that you have to even look at it that way. But it's even bad for you. You want to leave your family something. You know, you don't want to throw all your money away. Leave something for your family. You, you're giving money away to a trailer park owner and not your family. It's horrible. It, it's a complete money pit. And if you're wondering why your family doesn't like you anymore, it's because you're throwing their money away. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Moving on to number two. Number two, it is a bad investment. Horrible investimento, my friend. Horrible investment. Let me explain to you why, quite simply, a mobile home, an old mobile home, like the one you're looking at right there, will never be worth more than the one right next to it, a brand new one. So you can buy an old house and it can go up in value. And an old house can actually be worth more than what it costs to build it. If there's, let's say, a crisis where there's more houses being built, so you can't get labor, building codes, there's a, or there's not enough lots left in a community. So an old house can actually be worth more than a new one, just like it built somewhere else. It's not gonna happen with mobile homes. With mobile homes, your old mobile home will never be worth more than a new one, therefore, the absolute maximum value of your mobile home is capped out to the comparable, which is you can always just go and buy a brand new one, clear a lot, and put a new one in. So your old one will never be worth more than a new one. And all mobile homes, the older they get, the less they're worth. We'll get at the end of the video, we'll explore a little bit situations where you could buy one 
but in general they are horrible investments simply because the comparable of a brand new one you can always just go and buy a brand new one for like eighty thousand dollars if you go double wide big as they get so very clearly a horrible investment that will never appreciate in value it will always be worth less than what you paid for it any appreciation will be the land underneath it and that could happen anywhere so that's not anything to brag about your mobile home's worth more now no the land underneath it's worth more now and if it was a house it would be exactly the same number three are buyers the buyers just don't want to live in trailers back in the day people used to buy trailers mostly old people from indiana well guess what today buyers in florida are younger every day there's more middle class regular younger people moving to the state of florida and they are hip they are not going to live in a trailer that's the stereotype that just fits old people and even today even old people today are hip these old people are driving around in these tiny little cars your grandma has an iphone and catches pokemon outside parks so these old people aren't even the same as the older people from back in the day these are hip older people and they would rather have a big house on a golf course with a lake there's a stigma of mobile homes and old people driving around in golf carts and i don't really see the next generation of older people being that weird i hope they're not that weird and they're not you know like i said your grandma probably plays catching pokemon outside your local park so people are hip people want to live in houses in nice communities the stereotype of living in a mobile home the buyers just don't want that the young people are definitely not going to do it and even the older people just don't want to be with that stigma of the old person living in a trailer i don't even think it's about affordability because people today car loans are longer than ever people used to finance a car for three to five years you can finance a car for nine years now because people want to drive a sixty thousand dollar car can they afford it no but they still do it same thing happens with housing people are able to buy a mobile home cash they would rather give that as a down payment for a house that's three hundred thousand dollars in the long run it it doesn't really work out the math doesn't work out but people don't care people want to drive a nice car they want to live in a nice house number four the banks will not finance mobile homes let's suppose that you do buy one and you decide to get rid of it the bank may say hold on buddy we need a cash buyer we're not going to finance this thing and here's a thought you know banks that's what they do for a living and if banks don't want to touch it why would you want to touch it banks don't want to finance mobile homes they know it's a bad deal they know that they don't want to put their money into something that's going to be worth less in the future instead of appreciating so the banks don't finance mobile homes because they're bad investments so if the banks won't touch it maybe that's a sign that you should not touch it banks will not finance mobile homes as they get older they have a bunch of regulations and requirements to try to get out of having to finance a mobile home they want to finance a house to you they don't want to finance a mobile home a massive percentage of buyers are going to be financing whatever they're buying they don't actually have a cash and even if they do have it cash cash buyers require a lot of power of acquisition they have the money in their hand so they're going to get a deal which means if you're a seller you're not going to have the advantage of being to upsell them at whatever price they have cash money cash is king they're going to get a discount because they have a lot of money so it's going to be in a situation where the banks won't finance the good buyers and the buyers that do have cash money well they got cash money they're going to get a deal and you're not going to be able to get back as much money out of it as you thought it was worth numero cinco storms yes in florida we have storms called hurricanes and they do a lot of damage and in other parts of the country you have tornadoes mobile homes are just not the place you want to be in during a hurricane they receive a lot more damage usually they have carports attached to them and the carports are just aluminum so it just flies away with the wind hurricanes do not stand up to houses when it comes to hurricanes hurricanes do a lot of damage and there was a lot of hurricanes in south florida so buying a mobile home in a place where winds can be up to 170 miles an hour consistently for hours at a time it's just a bad combination also mobile homes the absolute worst part isn't even how they're built it's the fact that most mobile home parks are very they're right up against each other and it creates a funnel with the wind where the wind just tears one after the other up it's horrible if you've ever noticed that after a hurricane mobile home parks get hit worse than anywhere else if there's a mobile home 
by itself with trees all the way around it, it usually does okay. But if it's like in a park like this, where it's just mobile homes and mobile homes all up against each other, it creates a vacuum where the wind can just tear them all apart because trees really protect homes during hurricanes. And mobile home parks usually don't have too many trees because the mobile homes are so close to each other that the wind, it just destroys everything. So hurricanes are a reason why you should definitely not consider a mobile home in Florida. Number six is repairs. These things dang old broken all the time, man. If you actually pay attention to the drive around video for today, driving to these mobile home parks, you'll notice that there's two mobile home repair people out. The guy right here working on this one, and then another park, there's another guy. They're always broken. You drive to these mobile home parks, and there's always somebody trying to fix a leaky wall. The way they're built, it's just, there's always repairs. And uh, it's a constant fight to keep these things going. The maintenance on them is incredibly horrible. And not only that, but then most contractors don't want to work on mobile homes because they know that the repairs are superficial and that they're not really going to make as much money. So it's a situation where the trailer needs a lot of repairs and it's really hard to find people to work on mobile homes. So you end up with not a real contractor. A real contractor is rarely going to actually want to start working on a mobile home because they know they're nightmares. Just the way they're built is horrible. It takes us to number seven. The way these things are built is horrible, especially the ones from the 70s and 80s. And really the newer ones aren't any better. The walls are sometimes aluminum on the older ones. Now they're using vinyl. It is horrible. Literally a pencil can poke a hole through a sheet of aluminum. They use aluminum on the roofs. They use it on the walls. They are built extremely horrible. Even the newer ones, they're not built that great. The materials that they use are OSB plywood for the floors, which basically you can pour water on OSB and that it, water itself will be enough to put a hole on the OSB floors. They don't use real plywood floors. They use OSB on everything, including the floors, which is horrible. The build quality on mobile homes is horrible, and that's why it creates a lot of repairs. They're basically an aluminum box. Sometimes they don't even use 2x4s. Now they're starting to use 2x4s. A lot of the older ones are basically broomsticks. That's how thin the, uh, the wood that they were using on these older mobile homes was. They're not even 2x4s. Some of the new ones are 2x4s. And oh, they're going to say we have a building code, but it's nothing like a house. It's basically the cheapest materials they can get. And it may look spectacular, but the cabinets are built cheaply. The, they don't use real drywall, hardly ever use real drywall. They use like this quarter inch cardboard, basically. I mean, you're basically buying a cardboard box. It's the way I would look at mobile homes. So they're built horribly, and that's what contributes to all the repairs. It's just really low quality materials that don't last and it's something you don't want to live inside. They also, because it's built so crappy, it is not uncommon for mobile homes to create mold. Keep in mind that you also have to insulate the bottom and that can easily get wet and you end up with mold not only on the walls or in the ceiling, you can actually end up with mold underneath the mobile home as well. Numero ocho, animals. The area underneath a mobile home is perfect for snakes, possums, raccoons, bobcats. Why wouldn't an animal want to live down there? It's perfect. So you will end up with anything from a gopher tortoise to a possum to a rattlesnake to any other animal. The space underneath the mobile homes that crawl space is the perfect environment for cats, basically all types of animals. So. What people will encounter is that sometimes these animals will dig into your heating system. Many times the heating system or the cooling system to a mobile home is underneath it and the animals will dig into your heating system and you'll actually have a possum or a raccoon break through the, 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 the railings of your air vents and you could come home one day to find a possum, a raccoon, or who knows what else inside your house. Also, many times the animals will go between the plywood and the plastic insulation or the uh, cardboard insulation creates a little area underneath your mobile home that's about eight inches, which is perfect for raccoons, rats, possums, all types of animals to create a habitat there. And eventually they'll start to dig holes upwards and come into your house. 
So it, it is not uncommon for people to come home to their mobile home and find a raccoon, a possum, or other animal is now living underneath their mobile home and eventually digs a hole and enters your home and now you have a family of possums living inside of your house. I've lived in two mobile homes and in both of them I came home to a possum inside the house. It's a really common thing, especially here in South Florida. It is not uncommon for people in South Florida. You don't see this everywhere, but you do see it in South Florida. We did it to our house. It was about $10,000. And I know a lot of other people who have done it here in South Florida. You actually um, put a concrete floor on your mobile home. You put footers, you fill it in, and you put a concrete floor underneath your mobile home. Because uh, in some areas, especially along the coast, it is so common that it just becomes a hassle when you just say, you know what, let's just fill this in and just not have to deal with this ever again. It costs about $4,000 to do it with plywood and at least $6,000 to do it in concrete. So some people spend the extra money instead of putting new plywood on their mobile home if they have to replace it. Because like I said earlier, it's always be plywood. So you replace it with three quarter inch real plywood. You might as well spend a few thousand dollars more and put an actual concrete floor in your mobile home. We did it. It was really expensive and then we've never had to worry about raccoons ever again. But other than that, you also have termites, you also have cucarachas, cockroaches. If you watch the top 10 reasons, a lot of other YouTubers have made reasons why Florida sucks, and they always include cockroaches and termites in those lists. Mobile homes are more susceptible than houses because instead of having a concrete block underneath it, concrete and blocks and all that, you have wood, so, yeah, and animals are going to be a constant problem if you buy a mobile home. Number nine is the zoning. There are different zones. There's mobile home, there's house, there's residential, there's multi-use residential, there's commercial, there's agriculture. Mobile home zoning is horrible. They don't let you change it. In our county in particular, they say that it has to always be mobile home. Basically, my lot right now, an empty lot on my street just sold for $50,000. And an empty lot in the same area for a house is $200,000. They will not let you change the zoning to allow a house. If you could, your land could be worth two or three times as much money. But because it's zoned for a mobile home, it caps out the potential appreciation of your lot. So your land will never be worth as much as a normal lot. And it will not appreciate in the same way because the zoning will not allow you to change it. So keep that in mind, especially if you're looking at it as an investment, which if we've listened to anything that I've said so far, it's not a good investment either way. Number 10 is the rules because most mobile homes are in parts. There's a lot of rules to follow. Usually these rules include 55 and older, which means younger people cannot live in these parks another very common rule is owners only which sounds attractive except for let's say you don't want your mobile home anymore you put it on a market you can't sell it you might want to rent it out you're not allowed to rent it your brother your sister your best friend you can't just have somebody stay let's say you your mobile home's empty you're up north and you want your friend to come and spend the winter at your mobile home you're going to let them do that that's very common a lot of people who have uh, second homes down here in Florida will let somebody else come and enjoy it, you know, their friends or whatever. No, you can't do that. It's owner only in a lot of these parks, which means you're not allowed to rent it out or have somebody else other than the owner and his wife or whatever, or whatever, husband, whatever. That's horrible. You can't rent it out. You can't let your friends stay there. Only the owner is allowed to live there. And that is a very common law in a lot of these parks. And let's say you have an HOA sometimes because you're in close quarters your mobile home has to follow your parking spots your plants that you have you have all the HOA rules and sometimes what happens in these mobile home parks is because they're mostly retired people they have way too much time on their hands and anything you do let's say like here they're doing some repairs your neighbors could go to the office and say hey these people are doing this and that and they'll, they'll make you get it's not like on a normal house where you can do whatever you want. Your neighbors, they're retired, they're nosy, and there's a lot of rules. And you're not allowed to basically do anything. If you're going to buy a shed and you're in a park, there's rules for that too. It has to be a certain size. It's not like on a house where you can do whatever you want. If you're in a park, you're going to have a lot of rules. And you're going to have nosy neighbors that have way too much time on their hands. And you're in close quarters, close proximity to people who have more time than brains. 
it's going to create for some uncomfortable situations and for some restrictions on your freedoms. Let's say you buy a mobile home in a place where there are no HOAs. You own the land and you can pretty much do whatever you want. And then you have like the complete opposite, which is complete lawlessness. Sometimes they'll have somebody renting out a camper in the backyard. They'll have chickens. They'll have commercial equipment. There's really no laws. And that's what happens with mobile homes. They're either way too strict or way too liberal. And if you end up on the liberal side of the spectrum where you own the land and you can pretty much do whatever you want, then you're going to have to tolerate whatever your neighbors do. I've lived in a more controlled environment in a private community and I was really happy when I moved back to a mobile home place where I own the lot and you can do whatever you want. I can play my music as loud as I wanted. I can do whatever I wanted. So it's not like a regular community. You're either way too strict in these parts or if you own the lot then you can do whatever you want. It's not like a regular neighborhood so then your neighbors could be playing music or throwing a party. So it's either one end of the spectrum or the other. There's kind of no middle ground like you get in a normal American neighborhood. Alright guys, so that pretty much sums it up. And on, you know, little side notes that I have and other little thoughts that I have on mobile homes is I bought one and it may be the right thing for you. It's kind of been the right thing for me because they are more affordable and I'm able to live in Naples which I couldn't do unless it was for this property. This property has allowed me to live in Naples. How else could I live in Naples? Houses are starting at $300,000 and for less than $100,000 I was able to get into a mobile home and that's awesome. It, it is a more affordable but if you're going to do a mobile home I would recommend that you stay in the $65,000 or less range for a single wide or a $85,000 or less for a double wide. Anything above that be very careful not to get burned. A lot of people tell me, yo, there's some of these luxury mobile home parks, like this one right here. I mean, you have golf access in your backyard, and, but you're going to pay $250,000 for that? Hey, I'm all for having nice things, but in a house where you're actually getting appreciation from it, where you're actually making money from it, because some of these luxury parks, like this one here, has access to the golf. You have your own private boat ramp. Well, guess what, guys? There's boat ramps that are free. <laughs> I have a boat ramp four minutes from my house. I pay like $30 a year and I can use it whenever I want. It's four minutes from my house. And a lot of these people say, well, there's a lake and, and it's a, it's a you know, luxury mobile home park. So those are the absolute worst ones you can get into uh, for every particular reason that I mentioned and more. You get into these luxury mobile home parks and uh, pretty much it is a nightmare. And it's just the cost doesn't add up. And then people say, oh, we have a lake and we have all these beautiful palm trees and you have golf access and you, hey, a park has golf access and it's free. A park has waterfront and it's free. You're paying $100,000 more for something than it's worth because it's got golf access. Dude, I can literally walk to the beach from my house. I can bike to the beach from my house and it's free I'm not paying for it so if you want luxuries do it in a house where it's actually appreciating it's a lot of times I have people tell me well you know I'm retiring in Florida and this is the only thing that I can afford don't retire in Florida then if you're broke why are you retiring in Florida it doesn't make sense it, you know the concept of affordable retirement in South Florida South Florida is not for affordable retirement if you want affordable retirement dude right now uh, about a few months ago, there was a single wide mobile home like the one that's right here on the screen right now, like something simple like that, totally inhabitable, $20,000 in Sebring, Florida, 70 miles from the coast. So you have these people who are stingy as crap, they're not very smart with their money, otherwise they wouldn't be broke in retirement like they are, because if you're broke in retirement, you've already made some dumb choices in your life. And now you're going to add to those dumb choices by moving into a $140,000 mobile home in these luxury or up to $250,000 for a luxury mobile home in a luxury mobile home park because all the stupid decisions you've already made in your life aren't enough. You want to do one final nail in the coffin and pay $200,000. Look, if you're really needing to retire affordably, 
There are parts of Florida, Sebring, around Orlando, the central part of the state, the northern part of the state, South Georgia, South Alabama, Louisiana. I don't know. There's a lot of affordable places for you to retire where it doesn't get cold. What makes you think all these, mo all these people that they can't afford a house, so then they move into these luxury mobile home parks where they're getting absolutely screwed in the business aspect of the situation. You're already broke, and then you go into a situation that's even worse. You think you're going to live 10 years, 5 years, you end up living 10 years, and you're just throwing all your money away. It is like, wow, what are these people thinking when they buy these things? Um, I, I hope that my advice here helps people. And if you are on a limited income and you're going to retire, do it somewhere affordable. Don't do it in a $250,000 mobile home park because you can't afford a $300,000 house. If you're broke and you're retiring, retire somewhere affordable. Sefer Hills, Florida. Sebring, Florida. North Florida. Around Ocala. Hawthorne, Florida. There are affordable places to retire. It's incredible how many people use the excuse that housing is too expensive so I have to live in a luxury mobile home park. No, buy a regular house. How about this? Buy a house or rent. Buy a house in an affordable place or rent in an affordable place and then you won't have to live in a luxury mobile home park because you are paying more than it's worth. It's in the, the, the affordability of mobile homes is an excuse it's, it's, it's a way to excuse stupidity, basically. Some of these places you can rent. If it's a short-term thing, rent it. Don't have to buy it. I mean, dude, you can rent. I was just in Mat Lache, beautiful island, amazing little island, and there was a rent with water access in the back for 900 and, what was it, $970 a month? Dude, it's like you're going to give a... F while, okay, imagine buying a mobile home on a lot that you don't own is the equivalent of paying a $40,000 deposit to move into a condo that you're going to rent or an apartment that you're going to rent. If you're going to throw your money away, you might as well live in a condo with a lake and concrete block walls around you where the mold's not killing you. So you might as well just get something nice and not buy one of these things. They're total scams. Avoid them. There are circumstances where it's good, but usually it's a bad deal.